Hello, my name is Brian Hovis, and today I have with me uh, Sandra Romero, um, long-term um, Thurston County elected official, and with a passion for history, even then, and she is now the uh, docent at uh, the Bigelow House Museum, and uh, so I welcome you, Sandra. Thank you, Brian, and I so appreciate this opportunity to talk about a real treasure in our community, the Bigelow House Museum, which is a house that has been lived in by the same family for 140 years. Wow. And it's open to the public on uh, from June until September from 1 to 4 on Fridays and Sundays. And so today, the reason I am here is mostly to talk about the treasure that's in our community. And in order, though, to share it with the public, docents need to be trained and available to help give tours of the facility. So I just kind of wanted to go through the history a little bit, not too much, and a tour of the home. Well, that'd so be wonderful. If I could just go ahead with that, I would love to do that. Yes, please. Yeah. So the first slide that we have here is the house, probably in the 1860s. It's a carpenter gothic. It's a little frilly looking, which we have learned in this climate isn't exactly the best and sturdiest huh. of home styles. but. That was the Bigelow House. It sits on a hill on Glass Avenue. And when it was built, you couldn't see the water. There were no roads. Um, it was in the forest. Is that right? Uh -huh. yeah. And then, though, uh, it got, of course, uh, logged so that there was availability of light and to be able to have cattle, horses, an orchard, and other things that a pioneer family needed to survive. Hmm. So Daniel Bigelow uh, was the attorney who came over from the East Coast over the Oregon Trail. And because there were so many lawyers back East, he thought he'd try his hand in Portland. And uh, when he got to Portland, he found out there were already about 13 or 16 attorneys there. So he got on a ship, a schooner called the Exact, with the Denny Party. And he got off in Olympia, and the Denny Party went up to establish Seattle. Oh. So those were the early exciting pioneer days of our state. So this photo just shows the Bigelow House with the early logging. Uh, another wonderful thing about the Bigelow House is that there is a spring there and fresh water was extremely important to pioneer families. Well, on this, uh, the next slide, you will see a rectangle and that is the original land claim that Daniel uh, received from the U.S. government. Mm. And I was doing some doseting and some neighbors came in and said, that looks like our neighborhood association boundary now. So that, <laughs> that kind exactly of brings, right? <laughs> yeah, that brings the history mm. closer to home. So here is one of the land claims. You had to keep proving up, you know, that you had done improvements. And this land claim came when, the, when Washington was still a territory. Well, Washington, or even before Washington became a territory, and then it became a territory. But anyway, the Bigelows still have the original land claims from four different presidents. I put this one up on the screen because it's signed by Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln, yeah, wow. So. And then here's an early drawing of um, Olympia before the fill came in and uh, I think it was 1875 what Olympia looked like. And here are Daniel and um, 
and Elizabeth. And they both came over the same year, the Oregon Trail, but in different parties. So they really didn't know each other until they came here. So Anna Elizabeth was a school teacher and Daniel an attorney. So I, they fell in love and got married and started the, well, I'll call it a dynasty because the same family has lived in the home for a hundred and 40 years. So here's another photo that shows the Bigelow house with complete logging around it. But then look at Olympia. Look how much was going on at the water at that time. It's very interesting. So now I'm going to get to the inside of the house. And we have Joy Schmidt here, who is one of our docents. And she shows up almost every Sunday to check people in. Hmm get, you know, entertain them and if there's another tour going on. And sometimes it gets a little complicated because we have more people that come than we have docents. Oh. And we don't really like to start docents in the middle of a tour because they don't, you know, get the benefit of the full history of the house. So yes. anyway, yay joy, she is great. So. Daniel Bigelow brought this law desk over um, on the Oregon Trail, and it's still in the house, along with Anne Elizabeth's school bell and many other really important artifacts of early pioneer history in our state. And the next slide here, uh, the way people lived in their house in the 1860s it's quite different than we do now. Hmm. I mean, you didn't let just anybody into your house. You know, you'd have uh, one room where you would have public events, like the Bigelows were really, really prominent citizens. Mm -hmm. So they would host funerals and church services hmm. in the front room where you saw Joyce a minute ago. But they also had the former parlor, and when anyone of real importance came to visit, they would be entertained in the, in the parlor. So we have what we call the Susan B. Anthony uh, chair, which is in the parlor, and we know that she sat in that chair because that the was the Susan. best chair in the house. Wow. So, and we have documentation of a thank you letter she wrote and so she came out promoting women's suffrage. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if you're aware, but Washington Territory allowed women to vote in like 1883. And then um, the legislature gave women the right to vote in 19, uh, it, nope, 1910, but the S Supreme Court overturned it. So women had to wait again to vote until the 19th Amendment, which was in 1920. But Susan was here, she was promoting the cause, and the Bigelows supported her every way. So um, another thing uh, that's uh, quite different from <laughs> today is there was no TV, there were books, and, but no internet, life was very, very different. People were more isolated, took longer to get to places. So when a ship would come in and unload their ballast, um, young women primarily would go down to the shipyard and collect shells and they would make beautiful uh, picture frames and other other art pieces out of the shells. And in this photo is down below is a dociola, which is part a dulcimer and part, you know, a piano. <laughs> Interesting. So another uh, photo of some of the crafts that people did back mm -hmm. at that time. And um, so when you, um, one really great thing about the Bigelows and today people call it clutter, but <laughs> Bigelow's never threw anything away, <sighs> at least to our knowledge. 
there is a lot of stuff. But that makes it wonderful. So when you come to the home, you can look at, you know, how they used to knit socks or <gasps> make butter or uh, crimp uh, their materials so they could have pleats, curl their hair. Yeah, that's when I was there. It was um, this is like walking into someone's house. It was fully had had everything that you would want to have in a house at, during that time. Yeah. No, it, it's quite the treasure. And when Daniel Bigelow died, uh, Aunt Elizabeth mm -hmm. needed to take in some boarders to help with the expenses. And my understanding is that they were cousins or family members, but she always, they always ate at the table every evening. Yeah. And that's something that's different than today's lifestyle with our busy lifestyles. Yeah. And then finally, the last occupant of the Bigelow house was Mary Ann, who was a fixture in the community and promoted history uh, endlessly and tirelessly, loved it when school kids would come to the yeah. house. Well, finally, in the 1950s, she got her modern kitchen, and it's the same <laughs> today <laughs> as it was in the 50s. And Not quite so modern anymore. Not quite so modern. I mean, there has been some uh, painting. Um, the floor was replaced. But, you know, early times they would pipe the spring water in and that would cool the milk and oh. other, you know, household items. So, anyway, that's sort of a little brief tour through the Bigelow house. And in order to keep it open and to promote it and to have consistency, volunteers would be really helpful. And so my purpose today is to say if you have a, a love of history mm -hmm. or just a love of our community, I'd encourage you to uh, apply and become a docent. They're the only requirement is you take training and have a background check. And all very simple. You don't even have to pay for any of it. Oh, wow, that's and nice. So, and on the screen there are a couple of links here. Um, I know you're you're not going to have time really to uh, to copy them, but um, you can always contact the Bigelow House Museum at gmail dot com which is pretty easy to remember. So that's Bigelow House Museum, one word, mm -hmm. at gmail.com. Exactly. Yeah. So well, that doesn't seem so hard. Oh. Yeah. So, um, I mean, is it fun to be a docent? I think it's a blast. <laughs> I look forward to it. I docent on Fridays when I can from yeah. 1 to 4. Um, if they're I mean, it's just such a treasure. You feel a little differently when you're there. It's like the world just kind of outside stops and you're in a whole different place. When you walk outside, you still see an apple tree huh. that was planted by the original huh. Bigelows. Um, it, it just gives you a real sense of place and your community and you're also helping people understand why Thurston County is like it is from the, you know, the eyes of early pioneers and what they stood for. Uh, well, it sounds fascinating. So, Bigelow House Museum at gmail.com, and it is open from June to the end of September, and, and that is... Uh, Fridays and Sundays? Yes, both. Fridays and Sundays from mm -hmm. 1 to 4. Exactly. Thank you. I remembered. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, good. Well, um, well, thank you so much for coming in and talking about the Big Old House Museum, which is 
if people haven't been to it, uh, I think it's a, this is a, even if you don't want to volunteer, this is a good opportunity to kind of come check out your local history. Some people that live in that neighborhood probably haven't even been there. So it's a real jewel. So thank you, Sandra, for coming. And again, uh, my name is Brian Hovis, and uh, thank you for joining us today. And I hope you'll visit the Bigelow House Museum.